The Officials Institute is back with another installment of Rule Review discussing incidental contact. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, and thank you for joining us yet again for another Rule Review segment. My name is Josh, and this is the Officials Institute, where we combine rules talk with video instruction for an easier understanding of what the rules mean and how they apply in real game situations. In this video, we will be discussing one of my favorite rules, incidental contact. However, before I do, click that subscribe button and become a subscriber to our channel. And don't forget that bell so you'll always be up to date on our new content. Do you have a suggestion for our next rule review topic? Leave us a comment below and tell us so we can all get better together. Incidental contact is found in Rule 4, Section 27 in the NFHS Rules Book, and it's probably the most frequently used rule in the game of basketball. Officials use their judgment every play to determine if contact that occurs on the court is significant enough to warrant a whistle or not. When the whistle isn't blown, it's not because the official didn't see the play, usually. It's because the contact that happened is actually being permitted and not constituting a foul. This is the very definition of incidental contact. Let's go ahead and review. Incidental contact. Roll those clips. In our first clip, we see white number four dribble past his defender and in the process elbows him in the face. So why wasn't this contact called a foul? In order to determine if this is illegal contact worthy of a foul or simply incidental, we must first understand that the mere fact that contact occurs does not constitute a foul. In this play, we see the dribbler make his move down the sideline and his elbow comes up as a normal action of running. At the very same time, the defender moves toward the dribbler in an attempt to guard him, causing himself to run into that normal moving elbow. Neither player did anything wrong. They both simply moved toward the same direction at the same time, causing some contact. The fact that the contact was an elbow to the face should not detract from the fact that it was not caused by any illegal action from either player, and thus should be ruled incidental. Let's go ahead and watch it again. In our next clip, we see a throw-in on the end line, and when the pass is made, Two players rushing to get to the ball collide and fall to the floor. How can this not be a foul with two bodies falling to the floor? Well, let's examine a bit closer. As the ball is in the air on a pass, we see both the offense and defense are in equally favorable positions and very much able to perform their normal defensive or offensive movements. For this very reason, any contact that may result from this play, according to the defined rule in the rules book, should not be considered illegal. In fact, the rule goes further to state that contact could even be severe, yet still considered incidental. Take another look at that one. In the next clip, a long pass is made to a teammate and when that player catches the ball, he is clearly hit by an opponent rushing back to play defense. This play couldn't possibly be incidental, with the defensive contact displacing the ball handler. As we take a second look at this play, we see that even though the defender did indeed displace his opponent, the ball handler easily started a dribble and continued to control the situation he intended. Because the rapidly moving defender likely created unintentional contact into the dribbler, and because that contact did not hinder his opponent from participating in a normal offensive movement, the contact should be considered incidental, as the official did in the play here. Here it is, 
one more time. In our last play, we see White set an offensive screen at the top of the key, and when the blue defender creates contact, he knocks them both to the ground, with the official calling a foul against the defender. But should this contact have been ruled incidental? When we look a little closer, we see that even though a player is expected to avoid contact with a screener, when the screen is set outside the visual field of that player, as it is here, contact that is made inadvertently should be ruled as incidental. Let's watch that one again. That is our breakdown of incidental contact. Now you know that when you allow contact to happen without calling a foul, you aren't ignoring the rules book. You are actually supporting it. So the next time you decide to pass on contact in your game, be confident knowing that your call is supported by rule. Now before we go, we need your help to get our video out to more officials just like you. So like and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. More importantly, please share this video with someone you know. If we work together in getting the word out, we can reach more and more officials every day. And the more officials we can reach, the better the game will get. Until we see you again, have a good game.